Hey guys, welcome to Indie Game Hustle. My name is Charles, and in this set of videos, we're gonna just start taking a look at UModeler. UModeler is a 3D modeling application built directly um, in Unity or built to be used directly in Unity. And so I wanted to take a look at it. Um, I really enjoy these types of applications, and uh, this one has kind of stuck out. I'm starting to get used to it. And I wanted to kind of show you guys how to use it and uh, maybe you guys can take it for a spin. All right. So the first thing I wanted to take a look at is kind of just generally the UI or the different menus that are kind of associated with it in this video. All right. So, of course, in my scene, I have uh, my little cube here and my little guy. Um, but more importantly, let's take a look at the menu. I'm going to go ahead and close these up here. And so here you have a UModeler menu here. So to get to that, the first thing that you're going to want to do is head over to where it says tools, and then you'll have a drop down here saying UModeler. Now, of course, I'm under the assumption that uh, you know how to go to the Unity store and actually download an asset. So, but once you download it and install it, your UModeler asset is going to show up right here. All right. And so once you do that, you're going to have a few options here. You're going to have about, you're going to have new you modeler, modeler window, editor, modulize, hierarchy, modulize, um, translate and refresh all. And then of course preferences. And so let's go ahead and click on each one and see what they give us. So of course about is this going to give us some nifty information about you modeler and some access points to say the website and the manual and to different tutorials um, being able to contact uh, the development team either directly through email or contact uh, them through uh, discord and just general things kind of self-explanatory and i'm going to go ahead and click here and if you click on this one here where it says new you modeler that's going to be the tool called you modeler. So we'll get into that here um, in a moment. But for now, just know that that is a tool that you're going to use um, pretty regularly. All right. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of that. Next, uh, you have your you modeler window and that's what this is. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. You click on that and click on you modeler window and you're going to get your window and of course just like any unity window you're going to be able to put it wherever you want it and uh, i typically just leave mine on the left side uh, because it's just convenient there um, but you can put it on any side that you prefer um, next thing uh, we want to take a look at modulize um, of course that's going to be more into actually using it but Generally speaking, modulize is say, for instance, you have a cube and uh, we want to turn this into a actual U modeler object. So it's pretty self-explanatory. If we click on that and modulize it, uh, we should be able to now edit that object with the tools directly um, used there. All right. Perfect. All right. So let me go ahead and delete that. And then the next one below, uh, that's going to be, I believe, where you can actually do the same thing to multiple objects. So let's go ahead and test that out. So I'm going to have a cube and then I'm going to copy a couple cubes here. And uh, let's see, we got three cubes. If I have all three selected, I believe that will do it to every single one. And so let's see if I select this. So it looks like, yep, it turned it into a U modeler object. And so that can be convenient if you have um, multiple objects in your scene and you just need to quickly turn those into that so you can edit them in other ways. All right, perfect. And let's see, we have triangulate. Um, of course, that's probably self explanatory as well. So this object right now is just, you know, a cube with sides. Um, but if you want some triangles there, you can go ahead and select that. And once you do, now that object has triangles. And so that's pretty nice to have if needed. 
All right, and I'm just gonna go ahead and back out of that. All right, and let's see here. The next thing, uh, we have Refresh All. Refresh All is generally, uh, it's kind of like a little tool where, uh, say you have some issues with your with your meshes, with your U-Modeler meshes, uh, maybe there's a problem with it, you can just go ahead and hit that tool and it may repair um, any issues you may be having with that. I would recommend definitely taking a look at the documentation for any of those types of details, or if you just run into anything, just hit up the Discord and uh, ask the question. And let's see, the last thing is preferences. Preferences is a big window, um, and it gives you generally uh, the option to change your shortcuts, keys. Um, you have some general settings here that you can mess with. This is the default material that you can actually change. Um, if you look at my screen here, uh, this is not the default um, mesh or, um, texture or material that comes with it. Um, I um, mess with my settings typically um, just to kind of make it my own, and I think that's really great about it is that you can update this type of stuff here so where it's completely native. So for instance, I'll move this over to the screen. So when I actually create a U-Modeler mesh, it's actually going to be the material that I um, intended it to be, as opposed to dragging a material directly from, say, your assets folder and changing only it, ch changing that material only at that time. So. Pretty self-explanatory, but it's good to know that it, it's there. And what other things that we can do? There's lots of other things here. I don't really mess with a lot of these settings, but feel free to navigate through this, and maybe we'll touch on a few of these things later on. Um, I did make one change here in the shortcut keys. Um, I went into the shortcut settings, and here is the editor. And if you click on this, uh, you can select either UV editor or modeling, and then below that, you can select the different tool groups. And I believe there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different tool groups here. And so, um, for instance, if there's a particular tool that you're interested in, so for instance, when I hover over this, it's gonna say miscellaneous. So um, here, and then this tool is your actual U modeler tool. This is gonna be one of the main tools you're gonna use I wanted to change the shortcut key to that. The previous key was, I believe, like Shift and M. And for my hand, um, I have smaller hands, so I didn't want to have to reach all the way over there to do that. So um, what you would do is go down and select the category or tool group, and then go into that. And you can actually update by selecting the actual tool here. So for instance, new U modeler here. So there's that particular one, which would reference this one. And then you actually just change the key and you can actually have it shift control alt. So in this case, I would hold down shift and select the S key. Okay. All right. So just, uh, just something to keep in mind. So when you're actually working and so, you know, whatever makes it easier for you, if you're a hot key type of person, um, here is that extra uh, area for that. Um, and I'm going to close this. All right, great. So another thing you want to take a look at, another area, um, it's going to be your actual menus and where everything is located. Um, so, of course, to get this, as I said before, you would just go down to U model or window and that's going to pop up. And now these are going to be all your categories. Now, the only category that shows up initially is going to be this one. And if you click it, it's only it's going to give you that U modeler tool. Again, this is that main uh, tool there. And when you hover over it, it's going to give you that hotkey as well. And as you can see, mine is uh, changed to shift S. All right. So if you select this, it's going to reveal a bunch of different tools. Now, I closed all my tools, but when you do yours, it may look like this. And that's okay. Um, I typically actually work with it like this, and I just kind of scroll down and look for different tools. Uh, once you get used to it, um, you'll know exactly what you're looking for. Okay. But generally speaking, the way that this works is the one that is not, it doesn't have a, a like a white box around it. Those are going to be the different tools that you can select. And the one that is 
that doesn't have it basically is the category, okay? So just something to keep in mind. And so when it's closed, it has a white box. Once you open it, it reveals the rest of these. So something to kind of keep in mind and get used to. But once you get used to it, it, it works pretty well. Um, another key feature here is being able to switch it from icon view to text-based. So if you right click in this area, you can switch it to text-based. Okay, and I don't typically use this, but it is nice to have because it says it exactly what it is. So if you click on this one, for instance, it says exactly the name uh, of what you're looking for, right? So that's actually pretty good. If you click on surface, it tells you exactly what it is. If you click on drawing, the tool names are there. So if the icons, you know, if you can't remember what the icons are, uh, don't fret, uh, you have this option as well. Um, but I would recommend utilizing the icons um, because it saves space um, as well as it looks nice. So I would say stick with that. The other options here is where you can do f uh, floating and dockable menu or floating properties. Uh, the floating properties are where if you have an, a U modeler object selected, so let's just go ahead and select that and say we um, we can so all these different tools are going to have different properties with it so you may want to utilize it this way um, as opposed to not having it float so let's go ahead and do that so for instance if uh, I went to this line tool we have a line tool here but if I got rid of the floating properties that information is going to be in a component section of the object here. So for me, I typically leave it here. Um, it's just it's off to the side and um, this works for me. But you may want it on a different window. You may want it floating, but it gives you options. And that's actually pretty cool. So just something to think about when you're actually using it. All right. So, um, of course, another option is right here in your actual editor is going to be a familiar window. And this window is going to give you access to all the different tools. So selecting your vertex, your lines or your edges, your faces and the actual object tool. OK. And so obviously self-explanatory uh, select faces. You can select faces, edges. You can select edges. Uh, verts, you can select verts, right? And just so you know, so say for instance, if I have verts selected on the right side, you see that area here where it gives you additional details um, regarding utilizing this. So for instance, select only visible. So for instance, uh, this one in the back, if I go like this, we can select them both. But the moment that I say, select visible only and do that of course you can't select it and so that's something to know where that's located so you can turn that off and on as needed um, and of course there's other things here and we'll go into more detail um, about that um, let's see here the next thing that's pretty cool is uh, of course you have your U modeler tool here but I would recommend you use your sh shortcut key um, with that and next to that you're going to have a settings menu this is pretty cool because you'll be able to change uh, snapping right here in the in the world view so of course if I create a new tool and currently snap is turned off our tool is just kind of freely giving us the option to to move this um, smoothly within the space and that's pretty self-explanatory but um, the minute that I change it to world grid, um, then you're going to be on the world grid and then you can also do increments. But what you can do is change it here to different ones or you can have a custom uh, grid set up. So I usually use one for just kind of basic block outs and then typically um, you can go ahead and close it. And so when now when I use the Umaler tool, you see how it's snapping to that grid. And so if I click and drag, I can kind of get that more accurate and then I can continue to do that. 
and um, that works for me. And so uh, maybe that's something that you would enjoy when you're doing it as well. But just knowing that that's where that's at, you'll be able to change these things as needed. Of course, it has some other things like global overlays and you get different statuses and you know you can see that information over here like your total polygons and total triangles um, all types of stuff so um, something to play with um, it's pretty nice and if you see up here where it says like seamless edit single versus all and um, versus group we'll talk about that in another video um, but all of these things are going to make a huge uh, difference you can even dock this if needed so if this is something that you want to have uh, readily available all the time, uh, that's a nice way to utilize it. All right. Um, you have your 3D cursor. You have that type of stuff here. So that's pretty nice to have that right in the scene. I don't particularly use this, but you might find it useful. And then you have a refresh all tool built right into that uh, toolbar. So that's pretty nice. All right. So um, generally speaking, that's there's not much to it. Um, once you start utilizing these features and just kind of getting used to you modeler, um, those things will become second nature to you. But um, I definitely recommend just getting familiar with the interface um, before uh, really diving in and building out your project. Um, just kind of playing with things, building things, and just having fun. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like this, feel free to click the subscribe button. I love creating videos to help people learn new things. And I do this really just hopefully to keep you encouraged throughout the process. And I do truly believe we can learn from each other. But as always, the one thing I want you to leave here with is to never give up and keep moving forward. Peace.